Game Warden. There was a lot of talk in town about the moose at Mr. Breton's restaurant. Some people who had never been there before went to the restaurant just to see the moose. There was an article in the newspaper about the moose and how he talked to the customers and brought them their bowls of clam chowder and helped Mr. Breton in the kitchen. Some people from other towns drove a long way with chains on their tires to Mr. Breton's restaurant just to see the moose. Mr. Breton was always very busy waiting on tables at lunchtime and suppertime. The moose was always very polite to the people, but he made them feel a little uncomfortable too. He looked at people with only one eye at a time, and he was better than most of them at pronouncing French words. He knew what kind of wine to drink with clam chowder, and he knew what kind of wine to drink with a special beef stew. Some of the people in town bragged that the moose was a friend of theirs and always gave them a table right away. When they came to the restaurant, they would pat the moose on the back and say, Hello, moose. You remember me, don't you? Uh, there will be a slight delay until the table is ready, the moose would say and snort and shake himself. Mr. Breton was very happy in the kitchen. There were pots of all sorts of good things steaming on the stove and smelling good, and bread baking in the oven from morning to night. Mr. Breton loved to cook good things for lots of people. The more the better. He had never been so busy and happy in his life. One morning, Mr. Bobowitz, the game warden, came to the restaurant. Mr. Breton, are you aware of Section 5, Subheading 6, Paragraph 3 of the State Fish and Game Laws? said Mr. Bobowitz. No, I am not aware of Section 5, Subheading 6, Paragraph 3, Mr. Breton said. What is it all about? No person shall keep a moose as a pet, tie up a moose, keep a moose in a pen or barn or parlor or bedroom or any such enclosure, said Mr. Bobowitz. In short, it is against the law to have a tame moose. Oh my, said Mr. Breton, I don't want to do anything against the law, but I don't keep the moose. He just came along one day and has stayed ever since. He helps me run my restaurant. Mr. Bobowitz rubbed his chin. And where is the aforesaid moose? Mr. Breton had given the moose one of the rooms upstairs, in which there was a particularly large bed. The moose just fit in the bed if he folded up his feet. He liked it very much. He said he never had a bed of his own. The moose slept on the bed under six blankets, and during the day he would go upstairs sometimes and stretch out on the bed and sigh with pleasure. When Mr. Bobowitz came to see Mr. Breton, the moose had been downstairs to help Mr. Breton eat a giant breakfast, and then he had wandered back to his room to enjoy lying on his bed until the lunchtime customers arrived. He heard Mr. Breton and Mr. Bobowitz talking. The moose bugled. He had never bugled in Mr. Breton's house before. Bugling is a noise that no animal except the moose can really do right. Elk can bugle, and elephants can bugle, and some kinds of geese and swans can bugle, but it is nothing like moose bugling. When the moose bugled, the whole house jumped and rattled, dishes clinked together in the cupboard, pots and pans clanged together, icicles fell off the house. I am not a tame moose, the moose shouted from where he was lying on his bed. Mr. Bobowitz looked at Mr. Breton with very wide eyes. Was that the moose? The moose had gotten out of bed and was clumping down the stairs. You're flipping right. That was the moose, he growled. The moose clumped right up to Mr. Bobowitz and looked at him with one red eye. The moose's nose was touching Mr. Bobowitz's nose. They just stood there looking at each other for a long time. The moose was breathing loudly and his eyes seemed to be a glowing coal. Mr. Bobowitz's knees were shaking. Then the moose spoke very slowly. You... R. A. Tame. Game. Warden. The moose turned and clumped back up the stairs. Mr. Breton and Mr. Bobowitz heard him sigh and heard the springs crash and groan as he flopped onto the big bed. Mr. Bobowitz, the moose is not tame, Mr. Breton said. He is a wild moose, and he lives here of his own free will. He is the head waiter. Mr. Breton spoke very quietly because Mr. Bobowitz had not moved since the moose had come downstairs. His eyes were still open very wide, and his knees were still shaking. Mr. Breton took Mr. Bobowitz by the hand and led him into the kitchen and poured him a cup of coffee. Dave, 
Not very far from Mr. Breton's house, in a secret place in the woods, lived a hermit named Dave. Everybody knew that Dave was out there, but nobody ever saw him. Mr. Bobowitz, the game warden, had seen what might have been Dave a couple of times, or it might have been a shadow. Sometimes late at night, Mr. Breton would hear the wind whistling strangely and think of Dave. The moose brought Dave home with him one night. They were old friends. Dave was dressed in rabbit skins, stitched together. His feet were wrapped in tree bark and moose moss. An owl sat on his head. Dave is very shy, the moose said. He would appreciate it if you didn't say anything to him until he knows you better. Maybe in ten or fifteen years. He knows about your gingerbread and he would like to try it. While the moose spoke, Dave blushed very red and tried to cover his face with the owl which fluttered and squawked. Mr. Breton put dishes with gingerbread and applesauce and fresh whipped cream in front of Dave, the moose, and the owl. There was no noise but the moose slurping and Dave's spoon scraping. Mr. Breton turned to get the coffee pot. When he looked back at the table, Dave and the owl were gone. Dave says thank you, the moose said. The next night Dave was back, and this time he had a whistle made out of a turkey bone in his hat. After the gingerbread, Dave played on the whistle. Like the wind making strange sounds, the moose hummed, and Mr. Breton clicked two spoons while the owl hopped up and down on the kitchen table far into the night. Hums of a moose. One day after the moose had been staying with Mr. Breton for a fairly long time, there was an especially heavy snowfall. The snow got to be as high as the house, and there was no way for people to come from the town. Mr. Breton got a big fire going in the stove and kept adding pieces of wood until the stove was glowing red. The house was warm and filled with the smell of applesauce, which Mr. Breton was cooking in big pots on the stove. Mr. Breton was peeling apples, and the moose was sitting on the floor, lapping every now and then at a big chowder bowl full of coffee on the kitchen table. The moose didn't say anything. Mr. Breton didn't say anything. Now and then the moose would take a deep breath with his nose in the air, sniffing at the smell of apples and cinnamon and raisins cooking. Then he would sigh. The sighs got louder and longer. The moose began to hum, softly, then louder. The humming made the table shake, and Mr. Breton felt the humming in his fingers each time he picked up an apple. The humming mixed with the apple and cinnamon smell and melted the frost on the windows, and the room filled with sunlight. Mr. Breton smelled flowers. Then he could see them. The kitchen floor had turned into a meadow with new grass, dandelions, periwinkles, and daisies. The moose hummed. Mr. Breton smelled melting snow. He heard ice cracking. He felt the ground shake under the hoofs of moose returning from the low, wet places. Rabbits bounded through the fields. Bears, thin after the winter's sleep, came out of hiding. Birds sang. The people in the town could not remember such an unseasonable thaw. The weather got warm all of a sudden, and the ice and snow melted for four days before winter set in again. When they went to Mr. Breton's restaurant, they discovered that he had made a wonderful stew with lots of carrots that reminded them of meadows in springtime. Moose moving. When spring finally came, the moose became moody. He spent a lot of time staring out the back door. Flocks of geese flew overhead, returning to lakes in the north, and the moose always stirred when he heard their honking. Chef, the moose said one morning, I will be going tomorrow. I wonder if you would pack some gingerbread for me to take along. Mr. Breton made a special batch of gingerbread and packed it in parcels tied with string so that the moose could hang them from his antlers. When the moose came downstairs, Mr. Breton was sitting in the kitchen drinking coffee. The parcels of gingerbread were on the kitchen table. Do you want a bowl of coffee before you go? Mr. Breton asked. Thank you, said the moose. I shall certainly miss you, Mr. Breton said. Thank you, said the moose. You are the best friend I have, said Mr. Breton. Thank you, said the moose. Do you suppose you'll ever come back? Mr. Breton asked. Not before Thursday or Friday, said the moose. It would be impolite to visit my uncle for less than a week. The moose hooked his antlers into the loops of string on the packages of gingerbread. My uncle will like this. He stood up and turned to the door. Wait! Mr. Breton shouted, Do you mean that you are not leaving forever? 
I thought you were lonely for the life of a wild moose. I thought you wanted to go back to the wild, free places. Chef, do you have any idea of how cold it gets in the wild, free places? The moose said. And the food? Terrible. Have a nice time at your uncle's, said Mr. Breton. I'll send you a postcard, said the moose. <laughs>